rugged, rough-looking little book. Maybe some of you remember it. It was Jesus is Coming in 1988. Remember that? <laughs> That's an old book. <laughs> uh, obviously, that didn't happen. <laughs> but you know what? The man had the right idea. He believed that we were on the very cutting edge of eternity. Yes, 30 years have passed since then, but I want to get into the rapture and also the rapture and the resurrection uh, because I think of Jesus Christ who was in the tomb and they sealed the tomb and they rolled a stone over it. Uh, but them Roman soldiers were no match for the angel from heaven. No match. Let's go to Genesis 5.21. I want to go uh, talk a little bit about Enoch. And Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. And I had to look it up. What does Methuselah mean? And it means the deluge or the flood that is coming upon my death. Wow. Uh, earlier, I probably couldn't have spelt Methuselah. <laughs> but Methuselah, as you probably know, he lived 969 years, the longest of any man. And history says, and, and I, I use the Expositor's Bible. I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but I like the Expositor's Bible. Uh, it says that uh, Noah buried Methuselah one week before the flood. One week. Genesis 5.22, And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were uh, 969 Years. I had the wrong date down there. It's all right. Uh, Genesis 5, 24, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, because God took him. I kind of just think that's what's going to happen. One of these days, I might just be walking around Kroger's and just be looking at the milk or the cottage cheese or something, and all of a sudden, boom, gone. Hallelujah. I believe it is going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. You know how long a twinkling of an eye is? A nanosecond. They, in, in science, they talk about nanoseconds, which is one thousandth of a second. I can't even blink my eyes that fast, Pastor. <laughs> one thousandth of a second. But one thousandth of a second, I could be looking at cottage cheese at Kroger's and be looking at pearly gates the next second. Uh, walking with him up in the clouds, going on my way to heaven. Here's another one that's interesting. 2 Kings 2.9. And Elisha asked Elijah for a double portion of the spirit that was on Elijah. And Elijah promised that blessing would be done only if Elisha seen him being taken up. Uh, I, I like 2 Kings 2, 11. And it came to pass. Hmm. There might be trials in our lives these days. Things might be coming our way that are just unexpected. But all that came to pass away because Jesus Christ is Lord. And it came to pass, as they went and talked, and behold, there appeared, now I like this, a chariot of fire and the horses of fire. And they parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by the way of the whirlwind, which is like a great storm. Oh, hallelujah. I want to go to John 20 and 1. Uh, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene goes to anoint Jesus' body. Now, I, this, this is like my version because I wanted to shorten the, the pages a little bit. Mary Magdalene goes to anoint Jesus. 
uh, go, goes to anoint her brother, and Jesus uh, is, is, is in, in, in that. I know I got that mixed up, but you pray for me. Okay, she goes to anoint Jesus' body, and, and I got that mixed up with Lazarus, uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. <laughs> we'll get it. Praise God. And, and you know what she finds? She finds an empty tomb. Now, I'm a history nut. And, and there, the Romans crucified so many Jews in the city of Jerusalem that they ran out of trees. And they crucified people on the walls. Jesus Christ was not the only person that was ever crucified. But he's the only one. That on that third day, hallelujah, they, 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 they came and looking for him. Mary was going to anoint him. And, and as, as Mary came to anoint him, she, she found that the, the stone was rolled away. And I believe the angel said something like this. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? All oh, the dead were there, but Jesus Christ wasn't there anymore because he'd already been resurrected. He was already up there. Mm. History says something else, that the grave clothes were folded. He didn't just take off and leave those clothes just in a, in a corner kicked away in the corner no but he folded them and it says the napkin was folded you know what that meant when you was eating at somebody's house and you folded the napkin you was finished with the meal you were finished and you know what Jesus was telling us it is finished the price for our salvation has been paid it is finished Psalms 16 9 therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices my body will not rest secure because you will not abandon me to the grave nor will you let your holy one who do you think that is that's over in the book of Psalms I think it's talking about Jesus. I think it's about talking about Jesus. You will not let your Holy One see decay. Psalms 16, 11. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. I think of Stephen. This is not in my notes. I think of Stephen. As he was being stoned. Ah. Now, now we know that Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, right? But that isn't what Stephen seen. He seen him standing. Ah. You know where I think Stephen was at when he was being stoned? I think he was in the throne room. I'm not totally sure that he felt all them rocks that was hitting him. But he said, I see Jesus standing at the hand of God. He is standing for each and every one of us. And I believe that one of these days, the Father is going to look at him and say, it's time. Oh, it is time. I believe that we are at the very point of the rapture. I believe the rapture could happen any day, any moment, any time. We might not make it to our homes. The car might be driverless. I know they have driverless cars, but mine isn't one of them. I believe that is going to just go wherever it wants to go and somebody else is going to have to try dodging it that is left behind. I think there's going to be a lot of people left behind. I think sin is rampant in this world. There's things going on in this world that, that 50 years ago we would have never thought of. Would have never thought that would, we'd ever see the day that these things would transpire. None of them believed when, when Mary went and told them that Jesus Christ had come uh, out of the grave. They started looking for him. And, and Mary was, was talking to who she believed was the gardener. And I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but that's all right. 
I, I believe that it is time for us to let God take control. And sometimes that means leaving the notes and going on. Mary thought she was talking to the gardener. And she said, Sir, where have you laid him? That I may go and take him away. You know what happened to people that were crucified? They were placed in the Valley of Hinnom. The Valley of Hinnom was outside of Jerusalem. And that's where there was a fire going all the time. And that's where people that could not afford to be buried correctly were placed. That's where she thought they took him. Jesus only had to say one word. He said, Mary... She said, Master, Master. But Jesus said something that has caught my eye. He said, don't touch me. Why? Why would Jesus say, don't touch me? I go back into the Old Testament. The high priest, after he had made sacrifice for the people, he had to go and make a sacrifice for himself. And after he made a sacrifice for himself, nobody could touch him until he went into the Holy of Holies and placed the blood on the mercy seat. Jesus said, don't touch me because I haven't ascended to the Father. Where do you think Jesus was headed? In my mind, I think he was headed to the mercy seat that is in heaven because he was getting ready to take his own blood up there and pour it on the mercy seat for you and me. I like that. I think that is so much like Jesus that he has laid down his life for us on the cross. He was beaten beyond recognition. Uh, the stripes that were on his back, we don't know how many, do we, Brother Orville? We don't know. He's the first one ever told me that. He said the Jews did, did 39 stripes, save one. Because if they went over 40, they took the stripes themselves. But he told me, and, and it, it resonated so accurate, the Jews didn't, didn't crucify him. The Jews didn't beat him. It was the Romans. And I don't know if the Romans kept count or not. But I believe that they used a cat of nine, and they tore his back completely apart. Brother Russ, he did that for you and me, for our healing. He said, by my stripes. You are healed. Hallelujah. Mm. Want to go on? John 20 and 5. Jesus said unto her, Why dost thou weep? Whom do you seek? She's supposing him to be the gardener. That's what we just covered. And, and she wanted to know where they laid him. In verse 16, Jesus said, uh, Mary, and she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which means master. And in verse 17 is where he said, don't touch me. Why? Because he was our high priest. The high priest couldn't be touched after the sacrifice was made. Jesus was the, the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. I think of Caiaphas. <clears throat> he asked Jesus, are you the Messiah? Tell us. Jesus said, I am. I am. Caiaphas. If you get to looking in the Old Testament, it told the high priest, never rip your robe. The high priest was never to do that. You know why I think the high priest did that? He was abdicating his position in the Aaronic priesthood and giving it over to one that was greater, the one that was the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Mm. Jesus is our high priest. <clears throat> John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in me. You believe in God. You believe in me. You know what I'm going to have to do? 
I'm going to have to get the cheaters out. You don't do that, do you? Sometimes you just got to get the cheaters out. Uh, I guess that has to do with the 70 thing. I don't know. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not, to, were not so, I would have told you so. I like what you said the other day, Pastor. You said, I don't want a cabin. I don't want a cabin. You remember that song? Lord, give me a cabin in the corner of glory land. Mm-mm. He said, in my father's house are many mansions, and I believe the saints of God that are true to him are going to get a mansion in glory land. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am also. The word rapture. Is it in the Bible? Absolutely not. Nope, not in the King James. It might be in some other versions, but not in the King James it isn't. I, I, I know I like the King James. I guess that I, I, I kind of feel like I cut my teeth on the King James. And, and I, do I like the NIV and the message? And yes, I like them. But it, when, usually when I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking King James. Mm. First Thessalonians. Four and 15 for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and yet remain uh, to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God <clears throat> I think of the, the word rapture where did we get it Where do we get the word rapture? Uh, It comes from, uh, how many of you know that that, uh, uh, the the New Testament was not written in English? It was not. It was written in Greek. And the Greek word for catch up or catching away is harpazo. And when you get into uh, the, the translations... Uh, you have the Latin uh, translation, which is raptus. And then it gets into the word that we know so well, the rapture, when it was translated into English. Jesus is coming soon. And I know we're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. And I, I'm, I'm wanting to get on with my thoughts here. Paul's New Testament writings uh, were, were translated into English. One thing that I hear again, studying history, Mary Trudeau was the queen of England. And she hated Protestants. She hated Protestants. She hated Protestants so much and killed so many Protestants that she uh, was given the name Bloody Mary because she had killed so many Protestants. How many know that we didn't get our Bible free? It was paid for with other people's blood so that we could have the the Bible to read in our living rooms and in our church. Her and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Kramer, killed anybody and burned them at the stake if they were found with an English translation of the Bible. And I'm not just talking a Bible that you could carry. Any part of the Bible. I have a history book at home that gives a a testimony of a 10-year-old boy that was burned at the stake because he had the Lord's Prayer in his pocket. We didn't get our Bible free, people. We didn't get it free. It was paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ and the blood of martyrs.
1 Corinthians 15, 51. Oh, I like this one. You know where I'm going, don't you, Pastor? Oh, yeah. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and that's where you get the nanosecond. At the trump of God, the trump of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise incorruptible. That means we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And I like the next verse. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Why can we say that? How can, how can we say that? Because the blood of Jesus not only keeps us in this life, it keeps us through the grave and it keeps us to the rapture. Mm. Did I miss one there? Here's some reasons why I believe that we are at the threshold of the coming of the Lord. Do I ask you to agree with me? You can. But I'm going to try to use scripture to prove my point. Let's go back into the Old Testament. Hosea 1.9 Then God said, call his name Loamai. For you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Whew. Wow. Why did God say that? Because they were involved in idolatry, and they had forgot God Almighty, and they put him completely out of their life. I believe this scripture is very important to prophecy. And the reason why is I want to go to Hosea 6.1. The Jews were speaking and they said, Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will raise us up. In verse 2, after two days will he revive us. Hmm. I got my mind to wondering. After two days. Over in Second Peter 3.3, 3, it says, Know this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Second Peter 3.8, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. Hmm. After two a thousand years, can I put that in there? After two days, he's going to raise us up. What's he talking about? He's talking about the millennial. Oh, the church has uh, grown with Gentiles. I know there's many Jews that are Christians, but the, the I would say the majority are Gentiles. We are in what is called the grace dispensation just about 2,000 years after two days. But on the third day, he's going to raise them up. When do you think that is? I kind of think that's a millennial. I kind of think that's a millennial. It, it talks about uh, those in the, in the other countries grabbing a hold of the coat of a Jew and saying, let us go up and worship your God on his holy mountain. You ever study his holy mountain? Israel can't hold it. It's got to be over in the Mediterranean on one part and over in Saudi Arabia another part because the mountain of God is so big. And God is going to rule for a thousand years from that mountain. And that is when people are going to say to the Jew, let us go up and worship your God. Yes, he, 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 you know, turned his back more or less on them because they turned their back on him for 2,000 years. 
but on the third day, he's going to raise them up. Here again, these are only my thoughts. <laughs> I don't ask you to agree with me. But you know what I would like for you to do? Study it. The Bible says study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let me show, share some more thoughts with you. Matthew 24, 32. Where am I at? I got 15 minutes. Uh, can, can I have one of your five-minute intervals, uh, Pastor? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> All right, Matthew 24, 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, Israel. Or I think it's Israel. When the branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. Hmm. I think of Isaiah 66, 8. Who has heard of such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born in a day? For Zion travail, she hath brought forth her children. My answer to Isaiah is yes. Yes. Can a nation be born in a day? Yes. What day was that? May 14th. 1948. So likewise, when you see all these things, know that it is near. I believe the rapture is near. And even at the doors, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Now I have met people that say this is the generation of the apostles. And that the rapture happened in 70 A.D. I do not believe that. But there are plenty of people who do. What generation is he talking about? I think of King David when he was on his deathbed and, and he was dying. The Bible says that in, in, in King James English that he was 70 years old when he died. And I got to thinking about that. Hmm. Could that be the generation that Matthew's talking about? Could it be our generation? We know that Israel became a nation in 1948. We know that. And I got to doing just a little bit of math. Now, I, I, you know, you got to. And when I did the math from 1948 and put 70 in there, it came to 2018. Hmm. Could this be the generation? Could we be the ones that are walking in Kroger's and all of a sudden the trump of God sounds and the dead in Christ rise and we are no longer have our feet planted on this earth? Oh, I think so. I think so. Could this be the generation? Oh, yes. Israel became a nation in, in one day. We all know that. When did the generation really start, though? I got to thinking about that. Hitler killed six million Jews. Six million. Stalin killed multiplied millions of people. Actually, he killed more people than Hitler did. And many of them were Jews. Hmm. You think God didn't see that? I think God's seen that. Psalms 105, 14. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, uh, saying such is, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. They touched God's anointed. Back there in, in Abraham's day, Abraham received a promise that I believe is still in effect today because we are the, the spiritual children of Abraham. I believe we are still under the Abrahamic covenant. This generation hmm, killed 52 million babies. 
this generation. Not too long ago, I was watching the news. It kind of broke my heart. They had the White House in all the colors of the rainbow. Hmm. I think the rainbow was a covenant with God. I don't think that it meant an organization. And I believe when they lit up the White House uh, in the rainbow colors, I don't think that God ignored that. I believe they desecrated his covenant with man after Noah. Hmm. This generation. This generation don't know what bathroom to use. Kids in school, they don't know. They used to have, when I went to school, they had a picture of a boy and a picture of a girl. Kids anymore don't know. Because of what the Supreme Court has done. I get into studies about experiments that they're doing with DNA. And the things that they're doing with DNA will make your hair stand on end. They're doing things with DNA that are unimaginable. Our minds can't even comprehend it. Could this be the generation that will usher in the tribulation? Because I believe right after the trump of God sounds, that's when the tribulation is going to take place. I've talked to people before. Uh, I worked at a, at a place for 28 years. They said, well, if the rapture happens, then, then, then I'll get things right. You couldn't make it to Sunday morning service. How are you going to give your head? If you, don't ha if you didn't have the stamina to come to church, if you didn't have the stamina, and I know I'm not talking in, to any of you, but if they didn't have the stamina to come to church and give their life to Christ, they certainly won't have the stamina to give their head in the tribulation. They won't have it. I don't think all the things in this generation are going to go unpunished. I really don't. Matthew 24, 22. Except those days be shortened. Hmm. That popped through my mind when I come to that 2018 figure. Am I saying it's going to happen in 2018? I don't know. I would certainly want not want to publish a book like the 1988 book and then uh, it, it go on past that and say that guy was a fool. Because the Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour. No man. But except those days be shortened. I know this scripture applies to the tribulation. But I can't wonder if our days might be shortened. Hmm. What if God shortened it a couple years? Hmm. Where are we at? 2016. Could it happen today? Could it happen tomorrow? Oh, yes. I believe it could. I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in a bed. One shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding together. One shall be taken, the other left. Two men shall be in the field. One shall be taken, and the other left. I think if there was ever a time that the church, myself included, should say, sing that old song, Search Me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Shine the light of heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me because I want to be right, I want to be saved, and I want to be whole. Search me, Lord. Jesus is coming soon. There's a scripture that says that over in Luke 20, uh, 21, 20, and I'm about, as Brother Orville would say, I'm about ready to land it. <laughs> you said that a thousand times if you said it once, and I, I had to chuckle every time you did it. 
He said, I'm going to land this plane. Hmm. There's a scripture over here in Luke 21, 20. And ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation is near. Hmm. Now, all the newscasters call ISIS, ISIS. President Obama doesn't. He calls it ISIL. Do you know why? Because the L stands for the Levant. You say, what is the Levant? The Levant is the fertile crescent that runs from Egypt or over to Iran. They want to make that their state. But what does that include? That includes the state of Israel. They want to be called the Levant, not ISIS. They want to be called ISIL. Did a lot of these things that I'm talking about happen, happen in 70 AD? Yes. But could this be speaking to our generation? I can't help but wonder. Okay. Pastor, which I can't. Haven't you enjoyed that teaching tonight? Amen. I want you to stand with me if you would. You know, it's right for us to look into the Word of God and remember the truths of that Word and to keep the doctrines of our faith alive. Brother John, we know we're going to very soon be leaving this world. It isn't pie in the sky. It's not for a bunch of folks who can't deal with life. It's the purpose and reason behind the, the creation. God reconciling his people to himself. The Bible says before the worlds were framed, that there was a plan to reconcile the children of God to, to himself. Everything we do is, I believe, getting us ready for an eternal reward. I can't hardly wait when I think about what God has prepared when I, all these years you know you, I think about the people that died a thousand years ago or the people that died two thousand years ago you know Jesus said in John chapter 14 he said I'm gonna go away and prepare a place for you I kind of feel a little bit sorry for all those folks that died a thousand fifteen hundred years ago because their house ain't gonna look as nice as mine <laughs> He's waited 2,000 years for us, and I believe it ought to be amazing by now to see the, the, the product as it's coming to the close. And if we can make it all the way to the rapture of the church, then he will have put in the last stoplight and the beautiful gardens and the water features. How many of you know I'm not talking about a fairy tale here tonight? I'm talking about the, the land. The Bible makes reference to a land flowing with milk and honey, a proper promised land. There's a promised land coming for us, and it is not something that, that is just to get us through this life. Man, it's a hope, and it's the anchor of my soul. It's my heart. And I know I've got loved ones. How many of you already have loved ones who are over there? We can't hardly wait to see them. I can't wait to see my mother. When I get there, that's a, she's the, I mean, there's a lot of folks I want to see. And Jesus, I promise you, I've got enough love in my heart for him. I want to see him first and foremost. But I guarantee you, I'll be looking a little left and right just to catch little Mary Jane Phillips. Because I can't wait to see my mother again. A lot of folks. We've, we've, it gets bigger and bigger all the time. Here in the last week, we've added a couple of folks to some people that we want to see. Brother Virgil Amberg, he said to me, he said, that when we, we were visiting with him, he said, you know, he says, if you were to have a Stratford Heights reunion, he said, there's more members over there than there is over here. He said, the church up there is much bigger than the one down here. And I believe that. I believe that he's coming soon. I believe that the Lord is getting us ready for a time. And we're just any day, any, day, any minute, any hour. And I love what you said. I, I pray, Lord, even so, 
like the scripture declares, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. I'm ready to go. I'll take the next shuttle. It's been good hanging out with y'all, but I got my ticket and I'm ready to go. I'll take the next shuttle right out of here. If you hear, if you hear that I went on to be with the Lord in the next week or two, I don't want y'all, you know, I do want you to cry just a little while, just a little bit then I want you to all remember something. I want you to look at one and say, you know what? He wanted to go on the next shuttle because I'm so ready. This world is losing its hold on me and the thoughts of what's coming and where we're going to be for all of eternity. I can't hardly wait for it. I'm ready for it, aren't you? Why don't you lift your hands and just pray that prayer of faith and confidence in our God. Lord, we honor you tonight. We thank you for the hope that is alive in our lives. God, you are coming. You're coming soon. You're preparing a land and a place for us, Lord. There are some beautiful places here on this earth. There are some wonderful waterfalls and there are some beautiful islands and all kinds of places that you have created in this world. But Lord, none of that will ever compare to what you have prepared for those who love you and what is waiting for us just beyond our breath here in this life. God, we honor you. We can't hardly wait to get there. It's our confidence. It's our hope. It's our faith. And we hold on to it tonight in the name of of Jesus Christ and we thank you Lord the Bible talks about that message about the Lord coming being Maranatha I want you to say it out loud with me Maranatha it means Jesus is coming soon amen God bless you go with that in your heart tonight hug one